Okay, so I think what we're gonna do today is get the transmission cooler completely done. So I did get the fittings in the mail. I have some dash six fittings, so I'm gonna do dash six line. So this is a 5 eighths by 18 inverted flare to 6AN fittings. So I got these from ICT Billet. These are $7.99 each. And I'm just using some 6AN fittings. I got a 180 here, and then I have a 90 over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run straight through this framework section here and then run the lines over and down and to the back. I also have the 4L80 6AN adapter fittings for the front and the back. So I'm just gonna use two 90s. I did have a shorter 90 here, but I didn't really gain a whole lot of space. So I decided to just use the one, sacrifice the space instead of having to use a second fitting. So the other fitting that I had was just this 90 here. So instead of doing a 90 into a straight, this one sits a little bit shallower, so I'd have more room in the tunnel, but I didn't really want to use a second fitting if I didn't have to. And I can fit almost a full finger all the way around the fitting in between the fitting and the tunnel, so there should be plenty of space. So I have a roll of 6AN line here. I'm going to run two lines back, because I actually have a second line. So I'm going to run the lines back, we'll measure it up, we'll cut it, and get that part done. Alright, so I got the top side fittings done. This one just goes through here like this. And then they kind of come together and go down through the factory hole. So they come underneath, go straight back. I did go on top of this section because the skid plate goes down here. I went back over the steering linkage and then I'm just going to run these along with the factory wiring harness. The factory wire harness is connected to this little bracket so I'll be able to zip tie all this together and it'll be in a nice little bundle. So I'm going to have it come over the top of the starter, over the top of the little ear on the bell housing. And then I just mark both the lines with tape where I want to cut them. So the tape's going to serve two purposes. It's marking where I want to cut and it's also holding the phrase on the end when I cut it. So I'll show you that part next. Okay, so what I'll end up doing here is just using the bandsaw. And I'm going to cut right down the center of each tape line. So I try to do a little bit over one full wrap on it just so the tape isn't so thick. But then it'll still hold the braiding and everything underneath the tape. Then usually what I'll do is I'll take the opposite end and just blow some air through it. Sometimes you can see some chunks fly out of it. So the bandsaw is actually a pretty clean cut. You can use a like a cutoff wheel if you need to, but that'll just create a lot more dust inside there. I've done it quite a bit, just make sure you blow it out, clean it out. Take this section apart and then this is going to go over the hose. So there's a couple different kinds of fittings like this. So that you can see this one on the inside is threaded, where this is actually a larger fitting, but it just has the ridges on the inside. It's not fitted. So this one can actually slide over. They're a little bit easier to get on. I found it's easier to buy the, the kits together or make sure the hose and the fitting is the same brand so they fit together easy. Sometimes I bought the fittings separate from the hoses and they like don't want to go on. So what I usually end up getting is like the $60 kits on eBay or Amazon that come with like 10 fittings and that usually works out pretty good. So what I'll do is take the ends and I'm just gonna like, I usually just push it in and kinda press any barbs or anything in. So then I'll start to put this over the end. It has to be twisted on this way. So what I'll do is push it against the workbench. This is just how I do it kind of get it started. And I'll just push in while I'm twisting it around and then you can kind of feel it catch on the threads a little bit. And you can see that tape line getting sucked in a little bit more each time. What I usually do is I watch inside there until the hose is up to the threads. So now you, now you can see the tape line is buried and the hose is almost up all the way to the threads. So I'll give it like probably one more twist. Now it's sitting in there pretty flush. So then I just lube this fitting. I just spit on it usually. Then you can feel it catch the threads and start to pull it in. Be careful not to cross thread it though because it's aluminum and it kind of rips the threads out pretty easy. Then once I get that started, I don't have the, the fancy wrenches. So what I usually do is put a blue towel over the fitting 
and I do a few wraps around the fitting and put it in the vise. Like I said, I don't have the, the fancy wrenches for these things. So I just do this. And it works pretty good. Go all the way around, get it tight. And if you're really worried about the cosmetic appearance, make sure your wrench isn't hanging over. If it's hanging over the fitting, it'll actually start to gouge into the bottom section of the fitting or the bottom fitting and you can gouge it all up. So I'll make sure that I actually get the wrench on there nicely, flat on both flats and it's not hanging over the bottom. And then I can turn it without it digging into that other part of the fitting. And if you wanna get real fancy with it, you can actually make sure that your flats are lined up on both the top and bottom fitting. So only real issue with using these is you do get some wrench marks and then occasionally you'll get a, a vice mark if it pushes through the towel, but this is gonna be underneath by the trans, so I don't really care anyways. All right, so got everything in and all done. Got that line going across, and then I did throw some zip ties on there. I still gotta test it and make sure the grill fits and doesn't hit any of the fittings, but I think it should probably be fine. Did go under, and I zip tied to the wire harness here. One just holding them together there, and then I put one holding it to that bracket here. Up over the starter, bolted the starter back into place. Then got the lines running right there. And while I was under here, I also went ahead and put the torque converter bolts in.